Hello and welcome back to Nova Rice to another video and today we're going to talk about mortgages. There are some changes that are going to take place starting in November 2023 and I want to make sure you don't miss out on all the information because it might either benefit you or work against you. So let's just find out. That's right, we have some changes coming up in the mortgage industry. And this video is to figure out exactly what's gonna happen, when is it gonna go into effect, and whether this is something that's gonna benefit you or work against you. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started here on uh, my screen. And the first thing we have here is a nice article from Fairway. And what they're informing us is that Fannie Mae introduces a 5% down payment option for multifamily homes. This is amazing. This is great news. But before we continue with the article, I want to make a clarification. I know that more or less you have all heard about low down payment programs and stuff like that. But typically the ones that we hear about are a 5% low down payment for single family properties or some others available for multifamily properties, but those are from the FHA. This program is completely different. An FHA is a program backed by the Federal Housing Administration. And this program that we're talking about here, it's a conventional loan, a conventional loan that is backed by Fannie Mae. And there are two different industries. Fannie Mae is the Federal National Mortgage Association, and they purchase mortgages from lending institutions in an effort to increase affordable lending activity at those institutions. Fannie Mae is not a federal agency. It is a government-sponsored enterprise under the conservatorship of the Federal Housing Finance Agency, meaning they are a private company. So they basically, for those who don't know, what Funny Mate does is that they provide liquidity to banks. So the bank comes in and they lend you money for your mortgage. And that means that after they lend you the money, they don't have any money left. So what happens is that Fannie Mae comes in, buys the mortgages from them, and it provides them liquidity, meaning they have liquid cash. And then they will take that money and then they will issue another loan to someone else who's looking to buy properties. And that's how they make sure there is liquidity. And Fannie Mae goes ahead and packages those mortgages that sells them to investors and yada yada and life goes on on that end, right? So that's a topic for another episode. But back to this article, what does this mean for you? Fannie Mae introducing a 5% down payment. Okay, so let's just take a look into this. As part of the ongoing commitment to support affordable housing, Fannie Mae is introducing a 5% down payment option for multifamily homes. What do you need to know about this? Well, here are some key points that I wanna highlight for you. So this is a new policy and it will start the weekend after November 18, 2023. Fannie Mae will allow a 5% down payment for owner-occupied two, three, and four unit homes, meaning owner-occupied, meaning you need to live there, all right? So um, there is an investment property, and that's solely for investment purposes, meaning you rent it out to your tenants, you don't live there, and owner-occupied means you have to live there. So this program is available for um, those buyers are looking to buy a two-family home, three-family home, or even a four-family home. But the requirement is that you need to reside in one of those units. And that's actually a major policy change from the previous requirements uh, of 15 to 25% down payment for such properties. The second point uh, was the implication for buyers. So this policy change significantly reduces the upfront cash needed for multifamily home buyers. Yes, indeed it does. Uh, making it easier for individuals to purchase multifamily homes while collecting rent and building landlord experience. The third point, low qualification with rental income. So even first-time home buyers can use the rental income from the two to four unit property to help them qualify for the loan, provided they have a current housing expense. Future rental income less a 25% vacancy factor can be used to qualify, especially beneficial in the context of high home prices and mortgage rates. So what's the motivation for doing this? What's in it for them? Well, Fannie Mae aims to support access to credit and affordable rental housing, especially with rising rents and mortgage rates. By allowing lower down payments, the agency facilitates creative and alternative ways for home buyers to afford a home. So what are the benefits for you, right? So here they're listed out. One, um, house hacking, right? It's a well-known term and it has been a fantastic strategy for you, especially with housing prices soaring in all markets. So for those who don't know what house hacking means, it just simply means buying a property 
and renting it out units. It could be a bedroom, it could be an office, it could be a garage, or it can be another unit within the property that you buy. That's what house hacking means. In terms of down payment requirements, well, with the new loan to value ratios, the LTV, um, borrowers will only need to put down a 5%. Uh, three, they present additional income sources as a stepping stone into landlordship for first time home buyers while living on the premises. The next benefit is that it is addressing high housing costs. And this policy provides a valuable advantage to buyers struggling with high housing costs across all regions. The fifth benefit is that it will benefit you directly, the owner, occupant, landlord. And this policy shift represents a significant opportunity to reduce mortgage payments by leveraging rental income. You're going to be able to use your rental income in your own home, which is amazing. Uh, the next point is that it is applicable nationwide. So this policy, it will be available in all 50 states. And another benefit is that it will contribute to the rise of multi-generational living, meaning a property available for multiple generations. So you got the grandparents living on one floor, then the parents living on the other one, and then the kids living on the other one. That's great, that's awesome. Multiple incomes contributing towards affordability, right? Now, let's go towards the loan limits, right? Because it's very important. How much house can you afford under this policy? Well. So the limit for a two unit property is capped at $929,850. A three unit property is capped at $1,123,900. And four unit properties are going to be capped at $1,396,800. That's for 2023. Now, if you need a little bit of more time to plan and um, purchase in 2024 instead. The 2024 limits are set as follows. So for one unit, it's $750,000. For a two unit property or two family property, it's capped at $960,300. Then for a three unit property, it's $1,160,750. And then for a four unit will be $1,442,600. Now, back to the original article and I actually want to move down to the FAQ section because I'm sure that a lot of you have a lot of questions about this and this article does a pretty good job in addressing uh, the most important key points. So the first question, what is the new down payment requirement for owner occupant borrowers on Fannie Mae multifamily mortgages? The down payment required is that it has been lower from 15% to 5%. Next question, does the 5% down payment apply to multifamily investment properties? No, the 5% down payment is only for owner-occupant primary homes. Multifamily investment properties still require a 25% down payment. Remember what I said at the beginning, owner-occupy, you get to live there and you can still rent out the other units. Investment properties are fully investment properties, meaning 100% of the units in that property are for renters, meaning you won't be living there and that's why it still requires a 25% down. But if you're planning to reset on the property, then you can leverage this program and put your 5% down. Next question, what properties are not eligible for Fannie Mae financing? So properties not eligible are timeshares, motorhomes, houseboats, boat slips, cabanas, mobile homes, and homes not on a fixed concrete foundation, okay? Next question, how has the down payment option changed for home buyers of multifamily homes? Fannie Mae introduced a 5% down payment option for home buyers of multifamily homes, replacing the previous 15% down payment requirement, which was in effect until November 18, 2023. Okay, so November 18, 2023, it's a new beginning for you, meaning you will be able to afford that multifamily home that you wanted so much with only 5% down. Next question. Can potential rental income be used as qualified income on multifamily properties? And the answer is an amazing yes. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac allow up to 75% of potential rental income to be used as a qualified income. This is actually great news because the way it used to be before is that if you wanted to leverage your rental income to um, help you qualify for more money or to even see if you qualify for a mortgage, that rental income needed to be actual rental income, meaning the properties needed to be rented out 
with a tenant in place, with a lease contract in place. So in this scenario, what they're saying is that you don't have to have the properties rented out. You can take into account potential income, meaning that the property doesn't have to be rented out. All you need is just to get an estimate and that we use that estimate towards that income calculation and then determine how much you can qualify for. Back to the article to finish off with the uh, answer. The potential rental income is determined by the home appraiser and can be used even if the units are vacant. Once again, it's amazing. You don't even have to have the units occupied. You can actually use an estimate done by a professional and that will help you qualify for this amazing program. So tell me, what are your thoughts? Do you plan on leveraging this? If so, what type of properties are you seeking to buy and where? Let me know down in the comments. I can't wait to read them and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.